I want to just introduce you all, and then Łukasz Androsiuk will uh, tell a little bit about himself. Uh, so here it is. Uh, a recognized researcher of games and plays once said, the belief that human culture arises and develops in play and as a play has strengthened in me for a long time and to an increasing extent. Uh, we think that these are important words above all, uh, bearing in mind the reason why we are meeting together today. Uh, firstly, we meet together to answer a few important questions from the point of view of our ambitions and intentions. What is game? What is fun? What is the driving and culture forming power of games or plays? Can we find a language that made us sensitive to such phenomena as social and economic exclusion? Uh, discrimination, intolerance through games and activities. And finally, what games can teach or unlearn us and what will make the world even a little better? So now it's time for Lucas. Yeah, thank you very much, Blanca. At first, I would like to, I would like to uh, thank you very much, Blanca, because uh, I don't know that you know Blanca was my student uh, a few years ago, and I would like to thank you for uh, this meeting. I'm very proud of you. Um, I'm very proud of you that you are success and, and interested in this kind of topic. So let, let me allow you to, to, to say thank you. And the second time, I would like to say hello, everyone. Um, um, I, th I think that this, this hour will be for our, for us, every, uh, for everyone will be very, uh, very interesting. And I hope that we meet a little bit more. Uh, talking about this all the topic. So um, thank you for introduction and 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 I think we can start uh, 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 that. But before I do that, maybe two two things about myself because I am a moderator of this discussion. So um, I am an academic teacher uh, academic teacher. Um, I am work in Academia Pomorska in Slupsk and Warsaw Film School. And um, before of this uh, epidemic, everything is online, so it's it's not comfortable as I want. But I'm very happy that I can meet these great people who are interested in the same things as me. And I think we can start right now. So I have so some questions for you, um, and I hope we we find the correct answer. But it, even if we not, I think the mo more important are the, the, the same question than, than answer. So the first question I would like to address to Evelina. Evelina, um, the first question is for you. How did you prepare to participate in the project? How many of the partners had experience in using games as vehicle for social change? How did you prepare to participate in the projects? How any of the partners have any of the partners had experience in using games as a vehicle for social change? Um, so my organization doesn't have any experience with using games for social change. Uh, however, we're working with youth on uh, a number of workshops, so we were we knew the target group. Uh, and so that really helped us to prepare, especially the debates at the end of each game. Uh, and personally, how did I prepare? Well, I read the game design uh, doc okay. that goes with the, the game. And that was really helpful because um, it's really long and it explains everything. Um, but that's it. I think I didn't, I just prepared by reading um, the documents that were sent. Okay. So maybe I will continue then the second question uh, to Naomi. Um, what, what, what surprised you most in the process of creating uh, and implementing the game, which was to ultimately touch the topic of radicalization? Uh, I think what surprised me the most was the debate uh, at the end, especially during the game, uh, the Kiev Whisper Still on uh, LGBTQ plus um, discrimination, because we had a really young group and they were 14 years old. And so we were really anticipating how the debate would go and actually turned out really well. They were really receptive. They were actually the most receptive group. Uh, we had two other groups that were 20 years old and they were really less receptive um, to that topic. So I think that's what surprised me is how open they were about the subject, even though they're 14 years old. Okay, thank you very much. The next question, um, uh, and the next question I would like to ask uh, Rikos. Uh, Rikos, um, 
What do you think? Which competences, in your opinion, were crucial for implementation of the game for you as Guiders? Um, hello for me as well. So, uh, I think there are quite a lot of competences needed. Um, the one of the main ones was about facilitation. You know, being able to facilitate uh, games like this or social. Uh, so social games like this uh, is uh, quite important because uh, so this is one facilitating like doing doing it at the job session uh, number two competency is um, about the preparation Naomi mentioned it about again uh, sorry not again before uh, about preparing for that so definitely facilitation uh, definitely prepa preparation organization was very important um, logistically as well. Um, so that uh, you can make sure that everything goes smoothly or being able to adapt during the situation, right? So because, uh, of course, we, we saw it a lot and we we experienced it that a lot with like three games that, of course, uh, during the games, um, we had to be flexible, we had to change, you know, uh, to tweak a couple of things to make sure that the game would go smoothly. So these were a couple of, um, these are a couple of competencies needed. And of course, to be able to, and to to have some not not necessarily knowledge, uh, but to, to to be willing to to um, to know more about your audience because in social city games you can play social city games with different audiences, not just with one. We play with youth. This is a program, um, anyway. But uh, for social city games, you to play with any with, you can play games with different audiences. So you may, you need to make sure that you know your audience. It's very important. And, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just wanted to, to, from my side as well, to, to reiterate what Naomi said in the previous question about the um, uh, about the process and about um, yes. the, the under the, the how how much uh, and the level actually of understanding of the participants. Um, and it was yeah, maybe I will maybe something. I will repeat this question if you if you have nothing. And yeah, yes. sure. would you like to repeat this question? I mean, there was um, uh, what surprised you the most in the process of creating and implementing the game, which was to ultimately touch on the topic of radicalization. And the first question was, how did you prepare them participate in the project? Have uh, any of the partner have experience in using games as a vehicle for social change? I think these two questions are corresponding uh, each other. So, so yes, please. Yes, yes. Yeah, about the preparation, I, yeah, I mean, mentioned a couple of things, and uh, definitely uh, another point of preparation was the training that we got uh, from an, from our other partner, um, Explore IT, that we prepared the game. Uh, it was a good, uh, it was needed. Uh, but regarding the second one, I just wanted to agree a little with Naomi uh, about the level of understanding uh, of the participants, which was uh, surpri not surprising, but it was, it was a good surprise, actually. Um, and to, that they were willing to go in, in this kind of conversation. So it was the same subject, actually, like Naomi said, for the specific game was about the LGBTQ um, rights. So it was very nice to see. Thank you very much, Rikos. Um, there's Evelina right now with us. Evelina, how are you? It's a great now. Can you hear me perfectly? Uh, yeah, I can hear you, but can you hear me? Yes, now I hear you. So um, yeah, let me allow you. you to ask the same question because we know that your experience is very interesting. So um, let's start again for the first question. What did you prepare to participate in the project? Have any of the partners had experience in using games as a vehicle for social change? This is the first question. We we go to the further few minutes, but please answer if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as um, TV Spolonus, uh, we didn't have like a vast uh experience in playing social city games. We mostly work in um, uh, non-formal education. Uh, as in the workshop yeah. uh, formula, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I had many conversations with Explorer IT how to how to manage the topic of uh, radicalization and how to 
cope with with the fact that the youth um, have chosen, for example, in one of our cities, Shedlce, the topic mm -hmm. of um, uh, ecological uh, catastrophe as as the starting point. So, so we we really um, we re really worked uh, to um, make a modification in the game and to to still work on the radicalization uh, topic. And it was very very interesting uh, how to do it. But personally, I work uh, also with uh, with uh, drama with uh, as a tool of of um, education with uh, with youth. And I think there are some similarities between social city gaming and, and drama. It's still the uh, role play, playing uh, as the core of uh, educational experience. So I think um, I, I was trying to, to find the similarities and to work on, on it uh, when I was uh, working with, with the groups. That's very interesting. Um, so let, let me allow you to, to ask next question. Um, what what you surprised the most in the process of, of creating and implementing the game, which was to ultimately touch the topic of, of radicalization? You said something a little bit about more, but let's go deeper. What what uh, what was the most surprised you? Um, how what is the difference between the, your first experience and and and, and second ex and, and so on and so on? How would you describe this? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, that uh, social city games for sure give you the opportunity to work uh, in bigger scale. You can you can uh, you can work on a selected topic, uh, which is connected with uh, social change, with uh, with young people, and to do it in uh, in the environment of the school on or in the city environment, which is even more attractive. Uh, so I think for sure that 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 was the surprising part, and also the um, the universality uh, of 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 this of this formula. Uh, so, for example, in the game uh, about the um, ecological catastrophe and uh, mm -hmm. um, and the consequences of uh, of uh, ecological um, ecological ch changes in in our world. For example, the participants of the game uh, were supposed to uh, work on the pressure uh, uh, of being inside very toxic and unfriendly environment and how to be still a group and how to cooperate. Um, and also the, um, the, uh, the reasons why the catastrophe started were also connected with the radicalization because uh, the, the thing which uh, which which uh, lead to the catastrophe was mostly based on on the war and the conflict so uh, I think the um, the radicalization topic uh, is uh, sometimes not very straightforward uh, but it's even better because then you can you can work on it on the the, the briefing part uh, and uh, it's it's more uh, authentic uh, and less, you know, uh, more moralistic or educational in this this very um, very stiff uh, manner. Because I think the, the the most interesting thing is the experience, and if the experience is very vibrant and and uh, viable for for the youth. Uh, then, then they really feel that it's it's leading to to something, uh, and they can have their own uh, their own thoughts about it. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. But I think. Uh, the... I'm sorry, excuse me, but I just want to say to participants that they can write questions on the chat. Of course. Don't be shy. I'm waiting here. <laughs> Um, uh, that's right. That's right. Um, well, uh, Evelina, uh, forgive me, but uh, there is a third question. I think that there's. Uh, I have to ask because is a, w w what do you think? Which competences, in your opinion, and this is a very important question also for me as a as a as a um, researcher, which competences, in your opinion, were crucial to for the implementation of the games as a guiders? Which kind of competition would you? How would you describe this competition? 
Uh, well, uh, for sure, you should be a good actor uh, <laughs> because okay. sometimes to to you know really uh, entertain the the youth, uh, you you need to you know uh, be very uh, charismatic uh, in in be in, in playing your role. Uh, for sure, you should be really good in the facilitation. Uh, the debriefing part is is very um, highly uh, based on being a good observant and the moderator of of the discussion. I think it's uh, it's another thing. And um, for example, in our case, we were working in in schools, uh, so it was really good to have the background knowledge about the group and what kind of uh, what kind of topics they they want to to work on. So so this knowledge about the the participants of of social city game, I think it's it's quite um, it it gives you more opportunities to. Uh, to you know, uh, uh, take something more from from this experience. I think it's very interesting when we when we think about what Hans George Gadamer said that uh, we are all the actors, and um, that the, there is a question how when we are really uh, uh, when we, when we really are self, and when we are playing someone other. So this is very you have to be play. You have to be good actor to play in other game, and it's the play on the second level. I think it's very, it's very interesting. Um, let's go back to to Ericos. Um, Ericos, um, how do you rate to effectiveness of the game in achieving uh, uh, the goals of the project and, and 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 in engaging players by comparing the experiences from online and offline campaigns? Uh, so I, just, I wanted to, to start by saying that uh, in Athens we didn't play the online game, we just played the offline one, uh, okay. which uh, was the initial plan uh, and we managed to do it. Uh, uh, so in terms of effectiveness, I cannot, uh, I think it's still early to say. And um, we were discussing it also in the previous session today that uh, just one game is not is not enough, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you will play a game with a specific uh, group of people, and then their perception of something will will change like this, and it's gonna be it's gonna have an imminent impact. But playing the game is a very good first step, or um, is a very good step in general during in, in the process of uh, creating awareness, of uh, creating impact. Uh, so I, I believe that um, the effectiveness is, uh, is good. Uh, it, it does have an impact if it's done right. Um, and um, uh, specifically, um, so done right in terms of playing the game, but also the, the debriefing um, that it's very important. Uh, Evelina was talking about it before as well. Um, so if, if you do these things, definitely, it's a very good step. It's um, something that, uh, it, it's a very good tool to you. It's a very good tool to use. So uh, I definitely recommend to people to, to play games and work with games. Thank you very much, Rikos. Um, Naomi, maybe you, would you like to share your experience in this question? Um, yes, uh, I would definitely agree with Rikos on this. Uh, I think games are a great tool uh, in that direction. However, just one game obviously cannot change the perception. But I think in my experience, in my experience of the games, uh, at the end, I think they were left with some kind of reflection, either on LGBTQ plus discrimination or racism. Uh, and I think in that way, that was a great that was a success. It didn't, I don't know, because also I don't know really their opinion um, on this. Um, I don't know if it's completely going to change, but it definitely left them with a reflection and they were more open to the subject, I think. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. same question for Evelina. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think for sure it's it's uh, as Eriko said it's a good very good starting point, and uh, we had some conversations with the school pedagogue who was the partner of um, facilitating uh, all 
four games uh, we did in in uh, Gura Calvaria in one of the cities uh, near uh, Warsaw and uh, she said that um, it's it's really great for her to observe whole process because then she can um, in in some way um, uh, develop or or like make a uh, plan to work on specific elements of uh, game game experience uh, in selected classes. So I think it's it's really it's really great uh, tool. Uh, for um, pointing the, the most important uh, elements of the problem of radicalization. And then you can dive in uh, when you have opportunity to work with the same group for a longer time and uh, to really change their perspective. So, so I think um, uh, in, in Polish schools, the really, really great impact uh, which gives the the social city game is the um, integration of the group. They can really know each other finally. Uh, so so from from this part, uh, it's it's really it's really good to um, yeah to to make this plan for for the de development of uh, relationships in, in the class and to work on uh, you know uh, harder topics mm -hmm. with them. Yes, of course. Um, let's, to the, let's go to the next question. I think it will be um, uh, more complicated, but, but let's try. Um, the project assumed that the games would be held in a city space or, or in the buildings. COVID changed these plans, as we know that. One of the games has been turned into an online RPG. And uh, the question is, how do you assume the potential of such games in work with environments where counteracting radicalization is important when comparing the experiences of online and, and, and offline games? It's, it's a little bit similar question, but I think we, we are deeper right now. And this is question for Naomi, please. Uh, I just want to say that we didn't play in the online game. Okay. Uh, we've only played... Um, regular games city game uh during it was fine i think uh what i would suggest to people who want to organize game is to have an outside um a space i think this is very very important because we've done it in two rooms uh, inside and it was less uh, i think fun for them so i would just suggest for that uh, for that question to make sure that you have uh, a space outside to play the game and also inside but uh outside i think is really really important thank you very much um erico so we know that um th th that you are in the same stage when you talk about online and, and and offline but but please describe your experience in this this kind of problem if, if you would like to yeah, so uh, we played the as I said the, the offline game, um, but as Naomi said, it, actually we did what Naomi said. So we had a space that was almost kind of outside, and the whole game was played in this neighborhood. That so uh, the, the, the kids and the youth were going around the city in the neighborhood, so they were outside. So I think that actually did help a lot. Um, and specifically for the online games. Um, as I said, we didn't play them, but I think it's, uh, you know, our, our world changing. And uh, we have to make sure that the online game uh, have this online games um, have the same impact as offline games, right? As much as possible. You can never, um, um, how do I say that? Uh, like the physical contact, it's always important and it will always be important. However, uh, specifically at this moment, um, we have to keep our distances. <laughs> so we have to make sure that uh, the impact that we get from the online games are, is uh, as significant as uh, the offline games. For us, the offline games was, uh, I, I think they were a success. Uh, playing them outside was good. Um, we had good conversations with, uh, with kids uh, with the, that they played the game. We saw a lot of things and um, it was also fun. I mean, it, one thing for me is very important is to to address the issues that you want to address to start the conversations that you want to but have fun as well and for the kids as well like this is and this is the the magic of of 
playing social sim games. So through gamification, enjoying and, have, and, and the kids enjoying what they're doing while discussing and about serious issues and while coming closer with these concepts. Thank you very much, Rikos. Evelina, would you agree with your uh, friends or have you got another experience? Uh, well, we, 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 did, uh, we did check the, um, the innovative form of uh, online playing the, the, the RPG. Uh, I think the, the most um, challenging part was that if you play RPG, it's really hard to do it in bigger group. So, uh, so we divide the, um, the, the runs uh, of the game uh, into a few, few parts and uh, every time we had like six players. So um, from, from this point of view, you have completely different contact and relation with the, with the, with the players. Uh, it's more exclusive and you can really focus on, on the individual playing of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it's it has uh, dis disadvantages if you if you uh, have to you know focus on um, on uh, number of the participants, but it's really great if you if you have uh, educational program and you can really check if it's if it's working. Um, I think uh, for for the for the youth, it's it's really a natural environment, you know, being inside the RPG game. So, so it could be uh, even even better for them to to play this this kind of uh, to be inside this kind of activity. Uh, and for me, it was very surprising that they they jumped into their roles uh, very quickly. And they really felt, you know, uh, as uh, being, I don't know, like a, like the leader of the group, and they they divide into into some uh, some uh, groups with uh, specific uh, specific tasks. Uh, so so it was very very quick for them. Um, so for sure, it's it's very challenging if you if you um, if you want to. Uh, as Erico said, uh, be be sure that this uh, educational goal is still with you because it's it's really easy to go uh, into you know making the tasks and being inside the ga gamification and uh, you know gaining points and you know this this part of of playing game. But I think it's uh, for me it was really fascinating to to observe them uh, inside this experience and and the the possibilities of of uh, using it for example inside the school or to to talk about something deeper uh, and in different uh, you know from different perspective. Okay, thank you very much. It was very interesting. Um, guys, I think we, we can go even much deeper. So let's talk about the ideas behind of this, uh, these games. So the next question, the next question is, is, is I think it's, it's one of the most interesting because the, the several games were created in the project. Each of them touches on a different source of radical behavior. Could you please tell me a bit a more a little bit more about the, the the themes of these games and and how they emerge it you know how what, what is the idea and so on and so on that that, that. and this is question for Ericos at first Ericos Yes the game that we played we played the same game three times with different three different groups was about the um, LGBTQ uh, plus uh, rights uh, that was the theme actually behind it that uh so as you know game changer uh, in the in the project game changer uh we it's it's uh, country let's say or its organization uh we chose we chose a theme or two that we would do our actions around uh and our thing was LGBTQ rights we did that how uh so taking just a step back now to explain how we chose this this, this subject was uh like june last june a couple of years ago we uh we did this sensing in the neighborhood of kipseli uh we talked with people especially young kids and we saw that the main uh, issue that potentially might become um, 
might create radical people was uh, on LGBTQ uh, rights and in the, the LGBTQ community. So this is what we chose, and this is was uh, what the game. Um, this is what the game was about. Um, it, of course, the game itself, the story, did not mention it uh, per se. Um, uh, because of, it was the first game that we played with this group, so we, we could not create a game, and actually the game could not be created in, the, in this sense of just mentioning that. But the way that it was written was um, in a way that uh, afterwards we could start the conversation. So uh, in the game was two characters um, that more or less they were gender, uh, they were gender agnostic, let's say. So we... And, uh, and um, on purpose, we were interchanging the se because of the sex of this uh, of this character because in the Greek language. If you have, to, if you talk about someone, you have to give them a gender. So it was hard to transfer it to the Greek language. But we we surpassed that by changing um, the the names uh, and the genders of the of the characters. And then after that, we start in the debrief um, uh, session. Actually, after the game. We started bringing the conversation about the sex and the, the importance, if there is importance or not, about uh, the story, uh, if the gender is uh, male or female, or they're both males and females, etc. So these are this was the uh, this was our tactic, let's say, that uh, that we use. Um, yeah. There is no doubt that, that this uh, this topic are very actual and and, and very controversial if in in the in the public sure. uh, domain. So um, I, I I can I, I can believe and imagine how important are these uh, these games and and rules. But we to the rules we go to further. The, the same question for Evelina, please. Would you like to repeat the question? Yes, yes, yes. If you if you could. Uh... Well, I was asking that several games were created um, in, in, in the project. Each of them touches on a different source of radical behavior. Could you, play it? Could you please tell, tell us a bit more about the themes of these games and how they emerged? That was the, that was the question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, we, we had like, like two processes of, of uh, emerging uh, topics. Uh, first was, uh, was coming directly from, uh, from the uh, social campaigns uh, which were developed uh, in the project. So it was the ecological um, game, uh, the R on online RPG. Uh, and the, the second, uh, the second um, and the third game uh, was supposed to be um, about something different. It was, it was supposed to be about hate speech um, mm. and LGBT. But because uh, we were working in the school environment, um, finally the school superior um, decided that we, we can't we can't do it we we can't um you know touch the the topic of lgbt because uh school really wanted it but they were afraid of the reaction of the parents you know and the uh, and the uh, and the community uh so uh, so it was hard decision for us but uh, we we decided that the radicalization topic will be like the the basis of it, uh, so we we um, did the game about the dynamics of relations in the in the group, and how you can uh, how you can um, uh, how you can be uh, radical uh, when when you have um, uh, some kind of uh, conflict inside your com community or you have completely different uh, ways of communication and that was that was the the topic of uh, you know which emerged finally from the situation uh, but uh, but for sure I think it it would be very very interesting to to have this experience that Erikos had but as you know, the situation in Poland is really, really hard now to 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 work on LGBT themes 
uh, inside schools. Uh, so yeah, we, we lost this opportunity. Yeah. Yes, I can imagine what your experience. Um, Naomi, the same question for you. Yes. So how the themes uh, have emerged? Well, it was the, we've played two games, one on, uh, well, three in total, but two on uh, LGBT and one on racism. And it was the same themes as our uh, social campaign with the uh, Ambassadors of Change, another activity of Game Changers. Um, so we, the campaigns were on racism and LGBT, so we've done the same uh, themes uh, and how they emerge um, during the games. Actually, we had the same thing as Ericos for LGBT. Uh, it was we switched the pronouns all the time. We would say because with the two characters in the game, we would say he, she, he, she, um, etc. And so that was actually the first question when we start, started the debriefing. They were like, "What? Who are they?" Who are these people? Like, what are the genders? So that was really easy then to go into the debate. And then for the other one on racism, uh, the game was on space colonization uh, with two groups, one indigenous, one human that goes to space. And so that was very straightforward. Um, you know, it was colonization. So they understood directly what we, what we were talking about. But I would also say, uh, we had something similar as Evelina. One of the school didn't want us to uh, play the LGBT uh, Q games, actually, and they only wanted to play the race, uh, the one on racism. Um, and I'm based in France, which was kind of surprising, but okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I think the next question is 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 a uh, again highly highly correspondent with with this question because the. That three of four games um, have been already tested. Could you could you risk a statement be say based on your experience so far that uh, some problems um, areas are more viable and and better suited for inclusion in in, in games than others? I, I supposed um, this is my thesis that uh, it's dependent on fragility fragility of uh, of nation and, and and so on and so on. That maybe there is uh, something. In this question, what would you like to to share with us? I can I can start again. Um, again, as I said, we played one game, one one theme. Uh, but my personal opinion on this question is that mm, I don't think so. I mean, um, games and social safety games is just a tool, uh, as we were discussing before. It's a very powerful tool. So it's important to to understand that it's it is actually a tool, and uh, you can create. I believe any any types of games uh, to include any any subject you, that you want, so that you can start the discussion. So, uh, I of course you Lucas, you know much more on the subject than than me. Uh, so of course your opinion is uh, appreciated here as well. Uh, my personal opinion is that I don't think that there is one or other subject to talk about more or less using a social city game. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arikos. Um, Naomi, please share. So it was about what problems are more suitable? Yes, uh, yes. I was asking what, what, was, what yeah, problems what are more popular than others? What is uh, more immersional, if, if, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean? What, what is more interesting for these people, gamers, and you know? I think it depends on the target group also. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that the LGBTQ plus uh, one was going to be more difficult in the debate. And I think that's why I've said at the beginning of the session that I was surprised with 14 years old being so open and receptive, um, way more than 20 years old. Um, I don't know why, for some reason, I think LGBT with 20 years old works less. That was so racism with 20 years old. That was fine. 14 years old and yeah. LGBT, that was fine. But LGBT and 20 years old, that was not as fine. Uh, that's I'm not entirely sure why, um, they, but they were not receptive. Like they were not open when we asked them the question in the debate. They were like, "No, like the two characters, it's a boy and a girl, and that's it. Like for mm -hmm. sure, it can't be both. It can't be two men. It can't be two women. Like they didn't even want to engage in the debate." 
I think they're maybe more exposed to um, hate speech online, like on social media, than 14 years old. So maybe that's why um, um, they weren't as receptive. Mm -hmm. But one of my advice, I think, would be, well, actually, no. The, my advice maybe would be to play uh, the LGBT, LGBT um, game with 20 years old and try with them because I think this is where um, it does it works less but it's if it works it's better because they actually can change their minds so okay thank you very much uh, Evelina would you like to add something uh, yeah just just two things I think uh, that social city game uh, is always kind of experiment so it's it's really exciting when you work with uh, you know group that you know really well and if you play with a new group it's always very surprising what they can uh, come up with and and what what you can develop with this group so um, for sure i think that it's it's very universal tool and another thing is that uh, for you it's really it's really great time to you know talk about being inside the group, uh, how how do you, uh, what what is your identity, uh, what is your role uh, inside your your group? Uh, so, for sure, this this topic of uh, group dynamics is is very is very interesting. I think uh, to if you if you use the social city game, it's it's very, it has big bigger potential. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Um, guys, before I ask you the next question, I would like to know, um, you said um, there's a reason that I set up uh, the, 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 in the introduction the play and the game. What, what, do, we, what do you think? How There is any, any difference between game and the play, which, which is how, how they look in, um, in the... Uh, in the, in the in the chatter, right? Is that every play is a game, or every game is a play, or we can, you know, our, we, we can be in game, but the game is not a play as itself, and every play is a, is a game. You know what I'm talking about? What is the difference between two words? I think it's very interesting in this this topic. Would you would you like before I ask this question, you know, say something about that? Ericos, it's question for you. I, I I knew you would ask me, and it's a very hard question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you think, Lucas? Is it the same? I don't. So no, I don't think it's the same, right? Uh, what the difference in a game and a in a play? I think a game for me, like in my mind, is a more holistic uh, concept uh, than like play. You can play any, any, anything you you know. Uh, anytime, anything. A game is something that has a, a start, a middle, and an end. This is how I view it. And uh, there is a uh, purpose. There is a um, an objective. Something like this. But I, to be honest, I'm not sure if this is true. What I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry for this question, but but I think it's very interesting when we talk about this all. Um, uh, social experiment because I think it's a social experiment. No, I mean, maybe you have some idea what's is the difference between plays and game. Uh, not really, actually. But uh, mm -hmm. when you say play, do you mean like theater play or just like playing as um, an action? And, 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 mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's probably the difference between language. In in my language, in Polish language, there's some um, difference between gra i zabawa. And and I, I I'm not sure that uh, that this 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 difference between play and games are the same in English, uh, but um, Evelina is, is is also from Poland. I, I think she understands what I'm trying to to, <laughs> to explain. Because when you say play, I think theater, and for me that's like yeah. Also, well, <laughs> yeah, but 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 also you know uh, the 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 kids are playing each other and so on and so on, and 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 you know when when I, when I, when am I when I am, you know, playing in 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 old car or 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 anything else, I we say that we are playing each other mm -hmm. together and so on. Um, yeah, Evelina, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, please, no, Sam, please. Because 
obviously the social city game as a very uh, as a purpose, right? So that's social change. However, I would say that every game has a purpose. Whatever we're playing, I think it has a purpose. Whether it's not, it doesn't have to be social change, but even if it's a monopoly, or even if we're playing with little cars, or even if we're playing like, I don't know, something for team building, it's always, there's always a purpose. I don't think we ever play just like this. I think we always gain something from playing. And I think, yeah, the Social City game obviously had very straight, like very, a purpose that was social change, that was in the game design, et cetera. But I would say that every play also has a purpose. So I don't really see a huge difference actually between uh, just playing and the Social City game. Yeah, but you know, maybe maybe you understand me better because of language. Maybe you would like to to, to see a difference between these old two words. Uh, yeah, I, I just checked what's what's the expression in uh, French uh, of of play and and game, and it's the same. So uh, it's it's le jeu. <laughs> so so uh, I think it, it could be also confusing uh, in French, but. Um, for me, uh, play in in Polish uh, means also to to uh, to you know make jokes and not being very serious inside what, uh, this experience of of the game. So uh, so it's also very good to, for example, deal with some kind of tension you have uh, in in in. The, uh, something which is difficult for you, uh, for example, the game. Uh, so, so I think play is uh, more about the the attitude and how you are inside the, the game. And as Eriko said, I think game is more like a complex uh, and planned experience uh, you you give the the participants. And uh, yeah, and for example, Monopoly or any kind of uh, game also gives you a chance to to play with it or or to make jokes on it. You know, uh, you can uh, you can do it uh, in either way you you want to. You can take it seriously or you can uh, you know uh, being a little bit. Uh, stupid uh, <laughs> inside this this experience. I don't know how 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 are you interesting this kind of question. I will explain you why. But before that, I will tell you something. So um, you will not find a conclusion definition of game. So right now, every researcher uh, they are interested in in games. Um, you know, they they screamed each other. They cannot find conclusion definition of games. There is so many definition but there is no conclusion that every researcher say okay this is the great definition so but right now uh, we have uh, there is uh, um, we we agree together between that the the basic difference between play and games is that every game has to be rules if you play you don't have to be rules you know um, it, it doesn't the games have to have the have on the on the games, behind the games have to be rules. On play, not. And this is that we know, that we agree with that. And that's, I am questioning it because the next question is very, very interesting on this, uh, this topic. So, researchers focusing on the culture of games, all games, not just the games we're talking about right now, but all, all kind of games, suggest that the proper career of meanings when talking about games is not the narrative liar, but the rules. How do you understand this suggestion in the context of your experience experiences? What do you think make the game's success when we think about rules? And how do you define the success? Um, Ericos, please. Yes. Um, I think both of these are important so narrative is important on our um, case the narrative is important because you have to pass the right subject the right messages so that you can discuss about them uh later so yes the narrative in the story plays a big role for the specific uh for the specific project uh, for sure uh 
uh, but I I agree the the rules are also important in order to create a game and to 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 actually allow the participants to go into the role and to go into the in and understand the narrative so that afterwards you can discuss more about the subjects etc. Uh, so yeah, definitely the 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 rules and the way that the game is built is uh, super important. Thank you very much, um, Naomi. Yes. Um, so about the rules, I do think they're important. I do think they're as equally important as um, narrative, and obviously they're the basis of the game. However, I would say that too many rule kill the rule. So when there's too many rules and it, and it becomes chaotic, we had a little bit of this experience when there was so many things uh, in the game design that they were the, the young people were so overwhelmed. Um, so it kind of became chaotic in a fun way. So we kind of let them do whatever they wanted to do in a fun way, but to define success, that brings me to the questions on success is if they have fun. So I think that was the most important thing, especially those that were in the school context, you know, because they had to play the game, they weren't uh, voluntaries. So to, yeah, I would, I would actually, yeah, maybe disagree with the rule things. I think the most important is the success of a game is if the players have fun, not if they follow the rules. But that's only my opinion on this. Well, the, but but there is a question: Is it still game or is it just a play? That's that's we go back uh -huh. to the question. <laughs> um, yeah, if we if we don't care about rules, are we in game or we just play it this, with this game? Yeah. But thank you very much, Evelina. Sometimes the rules are fun, but it depends. It depends. I think it depends on the game design too. Yes, of course, Evelina, please. Uh, yeah, we we had a really similar experience of of the game uh, Uncharted, uh, in, where the you know two groups, uh, two cultures uh, had uh, have met. Uh, so so yeah, it's it's I think it's uh, it's really challenging for um, for the for the guiders and also for the participants to be uh, to be inside a game which has uh, really a lot of rules if you have only four hours and you know you have to get to know everything in 10 minutes and you know jump in inside the game very quickly it, it's uh, it's a big uh, obstacle to to deal with uh but um yeah i had the same i had the same question when i was uh, preparing to uh to the games uh what's what's more important uh, building the characters and being inside the role or or the story behind uh so yeah. i think it's um uh, I think it's it's one of the aspects of the success. Uh, if if the participants are really inside the game and they they really feel the story, and uh, they also are uh, you know the gay play they are playing or they are inside the the character uh, they they are supposed to be inside. So, um, so if if it's going and if it's very smooth and if they have fun, as Naomi said, I think it's 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 a good game. Uh, if if they don't feel it and, for example, they are struggling with with uh, understanding what's what's the story behind all this, you know, why we are <laughs> why we are doing this, you know, in this uh, very long time and. Uh, you know, and not really catching uh, what what is the what is the goal. I think it's it's uh, it's the sign that the game isn't designed really well. Yeah. You know, you know why your experience is so interesting for me because um, Janet Murray is uh, one of the greatest researcher. They are they they are try to answer this question. What is more important, narratology? Uh, of the story or or the rules, and um, this this the, the conflict state behind is is a conflict between narratology and and ludology. 
and she said something like this that the the tails is the primary means of expression but if we if we agree that we are talk about someone or something to use language we have to agree that the language that 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 is a that's the rules because the language is also uh, behind the language also stays the rules and this is very interesting so let me let me suggest some very controversial thing that we're talking about something much much more interesting than i think that um that we are um we are if if our interaction social interaction understand as a game so we are talking about game in the game you understand what i'm talking about this is very interesting i'm sorry for this personal suggest um let's go uh, to the next question and uh, forgive me if i'm I too, just wanted uh, to add one thing uh just yes. about like success and fun uh in the very experience of these specific games uh the more fun they had during the game the more open they were during the debriefing the more open they were um to talk about the issues and social change and so that was mm. the ultimate goal okay that's that's very interesting um that's very interesting that's so um, and now we, um, we are we are on the level Yes, would it like just, just one one short thing to to what Naomi said because I I, I yeah can I or we don't have uh, time yeah, yeah please <laughs> if you want okay. to say something uh, so I think um, well now I think it's the same for the adults. Uh, uh, because uh, in the theory of uh, of uh, getting knowledge and you know uh, learning about something, uh, you you learn if you feel safe. Uh, you you need to have this uh, level of comfort uh, to you know deal with your tension, deal with your uh, your anxieties, uh, and of course they they stay with you because you are a human being and you don't change personality when you play the game, but if you are in the experience which is uh, comfortable for you, and that means also in which you understand, then you can, you know, uh, get uh, this educational part and to uh, and learn something from it. And so I think it's really interesting, uh, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, these two, you know, uh, fighting, uh, fighting yes, yes, uh, yes. forces uh, of, uh, you know, stiff schedule and the, the the playing. I think it's it's always fighting inside, uh, you know, uh, uh, person who is inside the game, and I think it it gives it uh, more authenticity uh, because, yeah, that's that's. That's our being inside mm -hmm. any kind of group, uh, any kind of social experience. Yes. Thank you very much, Evelina. Um, well, we, we, we talk about a little bit about rules. We talk about story, about uh, we, we talk about success. And there is another, maybe the most important question, uh, in, in, in maybe the most important word in our discussion, because um, on the basis uh, of the reflection on games, well, one of the most basic and important categories is the concept of immersion. I'm, 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 I'm sure that you heard something like that, immersion. Um, which of the games in the project do you think has the greatest potential of, of, of achieve this effect, where, where it came from? Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter what games you are. Maybe it's dependent on rules. Then, I mean, what do you think about how is the relation between uh, this, this rules, story and immersion? And uh, maybe Naomi would be uh, started. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood the question. Actually, you've asked which game that we played was... has the biggest potential of immersion. Uh, definitely Uncharted on racism, just because it okay. had um, costumes and uh, they were actually playing a role, which is different. Well, their own role because in Kia Whisper still on LGBT, they had to played the role of someone else, right? Of the two characters. But for Uncharted, they were, they had their roles. They had, there were a lot of roles actually. I think that was great. You know, that was, there was a chief, there was a shaman. There were, there were so many roles. Um, 
and they had specific tasks. They had costume, which was a great team building exercise. That, that was really, really great. I think they loved costume. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so for immersion, definitely uh, uncharted and definitely if the participants want to try and, and do social uh, game, definitely involve costumes. <laughs> I think that was great, but yeah. Well, it's 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 still actual because of you know Black Lives Matter and so on and so on. This 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 topic is is still on the on the stage. So so I, I can imagine why. Well, probably it's one of the reasons why it's so immersive like that. Um, Ericos, would you like to to add something? Yeah, we didn't play. Um, we just played one game, the Key of Whisper Still that Naomi mentioned. Um, so it wasn't. I, I don't have a you know fun compared to. Uh, but yeah, what what now was saying was right that the, the, the youth were not in um, the role like they were just uh, they didn't have costumes they didn't do something like this so the narrative was important in that game and this is what we tried to to you know to to pinpoint was uh, the, the the narrative points that uh, they had to to sit on the side in order afterwards to start discussing about their LGBTQ rights. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Evelina? Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Naomi that uh, that the game about two cultures who which, uh, you know, meet and and uh, have to find a way to cooperate is, is very uh, immersive. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Uh, right expression in English, uh, but uh, it's it it really happened. Uh, it was also very interesting uh, that some people uh, could some participants could uh, could um, check themselves inside the rule uh, they don't have mostly in their real life. So, for example, we had a girl who didn't feel well in uh, in being a leader and uh she could check it uh during the game and she really did and uh it wasn't very pleasant for her because as a leader she didn't have uh, right uh support from other um members of her group so that was really um surprising and really good thing to discuss uh how you can be a leader uh, and, uh, you know, leader who has a uh, um, sense of goal uh, achievement and, you know, like the comfort of cooperation. If you have other strong personalities inside your, inside your team who are, aren't really, uh, you know, open to cooperate. Uh, so, so that was a uh, kind of element of, uh, of uh, you know, going outside real world and check something which is completely virtual and inside the game so so it was really really cool to to observe it uh and i lost my momentum i don't know what i wanted to say um yeah and the rpg game uh was also i think very immersive uh because uh we were working on on the materials which were you know uh, like um they they were looking like uh, real materials from uh, from the future. We had like the map, which which wasn't uh, which which was uh, very special and really uh, attractive in the visual way to to work on. And we also uh, where the participants were moving inside a virtual pl platform. So uh, when uh, it was easy to to go inside because the the tool uh, which we used for the game was also a little bit from the future, so um, so it was also very interesting and I think they the participants really uh, uh, experienced this uh, this um, immersion. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Evelina. We have, uh, as I as I see my clock, we have six, maybe seven minutes. There is a uh, uh, two, three questions again, and the probably next question will also to Evelina because, uh, as I understand, you have the biggest experience in in teaching and pedagogy. So, um, uh, 
in, 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 if and how, in your opinion, the game can teach or unlearn anything, do games have a didactic potential at all and they also cause social change in the long long run? Um, please, um, I think Develina would be great to, to see you started. Uh, well, I think uh, social city games for sure have like total like cosmic potential of uh, being uh, also didactic uh, experience. Uh, I, I was uh, reading some some blogs fr uh, written by Polish uh, teachers uh, about playing uh, social city games and RPGs and you know LARPs and all all those uh, all this stuff, which is uh, which is completely new for me, but but exciting. And they all said that if you if you are um, if you if you really uh, take it seriously and work on every element of the game. Then you can achieve whatever you want. It's it's the on, it's the, the matter of uh, how uh, how big effort you put on it and how well you know your group and your goal. Because asking yourself about the goal, I think it's the most important part of of this uh, didactic or educational part of of playing social city games. Thank you very much, Erikos. Yeah, I think Evelina said most of it. I mean, it's uh, as you said, she has a lot of experience in it. Um, I just wanted to add that the, that's my opinion that I I also totally believe that the social city games have um, detected merit, and uh, yeah. um, I, I think some it's up to us, like organizations, like like we have, and education organization, and everything, to start including more and more these kind of tools like social city games. Um, and, and start talking about them more and more so that um, also, you know, the school system includes them in their normal activities and their day-to-day -day, um, activities, the way that they teach kids. So, including tools like this, I think it's going to be good for education, it's going to be uh, good for, um, you know, uh, for the kids to and learn with uh, new ways and to have fun. Which means that they will uh, be more accept and accept, uh, you know, they will expect accept more what they're learning, and they will uh, have a, a new look and understand more um, on, on all different subjects. Thank you very much, and Naomi, the same question for you. Uh, I would agree with uh, Erikos and uh, and Evelina on this question. Uh, I do think social uh, games have a lot of potential, and even more so that just the the purpose so lgbt lgbt uh, or, or or racism but i think you know just games in general uh, can teach you a lot and it's great for team building and it's just great for a lot of things so it definitely has a lot of potential and i would definitely agree with derikos about including them uh, in the curriculum but um i've said also in the beginning of the session that you know one game uh, cannot you know completely change uh, someone, uh, especially because we have to take also in consideration, you know what's what they see on social media, uh, and just the overall environment. Uh, but definitely, if it's included in a curriculum and it's repeated, then maybe it, has, it definitely has more potential. Thank you, guys. And the last question, and we have uh, one minute for for this question. Um, do you plan to use games in the future also in other areas of your activity, not necessarily related to anti-radicalization, anti in which areas do you see space for games? So let's start from Naomi and go back to the Evelina and Ericos right now. Um... My organization, I'm not sure. I know that there are people that the NGOs that we worked with want to do the games uh, more with other groups. So that's for sure that the, there's a great transferability potential here. Um, for us right now, we could play the game definitely on radicalization, but for our others, um, uh, themes, for example, we work on media literacy. I don't know how 
I guess I don't know if uh, if you could make a social game on 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 that topic, um, but I do think that we will we will be using them, uh, especially for radicalization, which is one of the um, theme of our of my organization. Mm -hmm. I understand, Evelina. Uh, uh yeah um i think it's as naomi said it's really great to to team building and uh, to get to know more about yourself inside the group it's it's for sure like totally universal and great tool uh, also very attractive for for the youngsters uh i and uh, i now i remember that um uh, I know that uh, other organizations with, with which we cooperate did a game about nonprofits uh, in Poland, and uh, it was uh, very simple. They only used the cards uh, of um, many kinds of nonprofits in Poland, uh, and the, the goal was to, to choose uh, your uh, uh, your direction of um, of job experience. So. So here I can see that, you know, from, from a really uh, quite boring topic, you know, nonprofits, it's, <laughs> it's not a very exciting topic, I think, for, for the 15 years old people. But it turned out it's really great to, to talk about their, um, their uh, future job and what, what are they, their interests and what are their, their vi values they want to have uh, in in their uh, job environment for example so 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 for sure i think it's a good uh, inspiration and in our um, in our organization i think we we can use it for um, uh, for a discussion about <clears throat> sorry about the local activism and um, civic activism for example how how to be you know uh, uh, good uh, civilian uh, and how to what what is the what is the purpose of activism social activism uh, so um, so I think it's it's quite um, opening you know your mind uh, because you you don't you don't need like the the workshop uh, formula which is also very very cool it's it's also very universal but here you have uh, element of role playing so you can go a little bit deeper as we were talking about today that that for sure social city games give this oppor opportunity thank you very much Evelina and uh, Ericos yeah we will actually yeah for sure we will use the, the social city games and tool, uh, as a tool first of all um I think it's uh, super in, in, I think it is impactful and it's very very useful the specific games that have been designed for the project, I'm pretty sure we will use them. Like we used only one, so we have more that we can study a bit more and understand where we can use it. Uh, but uh, yeah, in general, I, I think it's super important for us to continue using social city games for not just for youth, but for any like uh, age and any people. And also, as both the Naomi and Verena said about like, even. Uh, team building activities. It's um, super fun, super uh, interesting to see that the group dynamics through the games. So, uh, it's a very good, um, they're all very good people in teams as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arikos, but actually, thank you very much, all of you. Uh, that's over. That's the the meeting is over. I would like to, I hope that uh, you enjoy as me and um, because for me it was very very cognitively valuable and um it helped me a lot of to my work um research work i would like to thank you for all your answers for patience uh for um this beautiful hour and um that's that's all for me flanka i give you a voice thank you very much I don't know how to say, what to say more. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I would like to thank the participants, of course, and to all of you. That was a great session, I think, and very interesting for us.